All right, guys, it is May 2nd, 2023. And if you're paying any attention at all whatsoever, you're going to know that Mother's Day is this weekend. You hadn't better forget it. But did you know that May is also Get Caught Reading Month? Yeah, I, I hadn't even heard of that up until about a year or so ago. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time to make my comments on it and tell you a little bit about it and share with you what I could be caught reading at this given time. Now, this was something that was started back in 1999 by the American Association, the Association of American Publishers. I didn't say that right, sorry. The Association of American Publishers. It was meant to raise reading awareness, to get to encourage people to start a, a hopefully lifetime habit and, and show them how they could derive benefits from reading. And so um, here we are. Here we are. Oh, let's see, 24 years later, and this is still going on. Now, if you go onto a website, it's national, nationaltoday.com. They talk a little bit about it. And if you scroll down, they give you uh, a, couple of, a couple of fun facts, what they call fun facts about reading, five of them. The number one says it's a stress reducer. It says reading a book reduces stress by 68%. Well, I, I guess that depends on what you're reading. I have a book by Kelly McGonigal called The Upside of Stress. It's a book I highly recommend. And it'll, it'll change your, totally change your mind about how you think of stress and it'll help you uh, make it work to your advantage. Um, I'll try to put up a thumbnail or at least a picture of it on the screen here, and, a, and an Amazon link for that book. It's such a good book. I first found out about her on a TED Talks. Anyway, so reading a book reduces stress by 68%. Does that seem high to you? I mean, sometimes I feel like it does. It probably does. It's a good distraction. Number two, it increases empathy. It says 82% of people often donating to charity are readers. Not quite sure why they put it that way. But I think a better way to put it is the reason why reading increases empathy is, especially with fiction, is um, in fiction, you get to get inside the mind of an individual and find out how they're really feeling and what they're actually thinking. You don't get that with nonfiction. You don't get that with biographies. Uh, all, all they can do is report facts to you and give you opinions and eyewitness accounts. And they can tell you what friends and family had said or whoever knew them. But they can't actually get inside the head. With fiction, you're, you're stepping inside the mind, body, and soul of an individual. And when you read good literature, you often identify with the characters and say, I, I understand these people. And I feel for them. And I'm able to see the world in a different way. This, this whole other cast of characters, and the, these people might be in my orbit now, and I can, I can relate to them a little bit better because I'm reading about them. So that's why it increases empathy. Number three, it says uh, it has an impact on the brain. Reading increases memory and analytical skills. Okay, well, I, yeah, I guess it probably does. Uh, four, it builds vocabulary. It says children learn up to 12,000 words through reading every year. Well, yeah, some of the most articulate people I know are people who are readers from uh, as early as, as childhood. You know, they, they're people who are lifelong readers. And they're the ones I like talking to the most. In fact, I like talking to other people about books and about reading in general because they always have something to say uh, but they also have a vernacular that that resonates with me because i i love hearing how people frame their sentences and put thoughts and ideas together and so the last thing it says on here the fifth one says the faster the better speed reading helps the eyesight i don't know if that's true or not i did learn how to speed read I'm not a huge advocate of it. I think it has its place, especially if you're in college or in a university or you're doing some heavy studying. I just, I'm not a big believer in speed reading. But anyway, that's what it has on there. And this is one of the things they say on this website is why we love Get Caught Reading Month. It increases knowledge, it keeps you entertained, and it makes you creative. 
So I, maybe just having mentioned these things so far will make you just a little bit interested in reading. Now I'm going to try to expand on that and encourage you to do the same thing um, by showing you what I'm reading. Um, I, I will say though, what, what is the deal with calling it get caught reading? I've spent most of my childhood trying to not get caught. I mean, and I've gotten away with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So I don't know if getting the whole, you know, saying get caught reading is supposed to entice people to do this naughty thing. Like what, what happens if you do get caught reading? Are you supposed to feel ashamed? Do you get punished? Do we, are we going to feel like, are we going to feel persecuted if we get caught? Because it sounds punitive, right? Are we going to need non-book readers to build rooms behind walls in their house so the book Nazis come that we won't get caught reading. But it's like they do want us to get caught. Not really I'm not really sure what the what the motive was behind the wording for this. It's interesting. I'm glad they do it. But anyway. So the first book the first book that um I want to show you that I've been reading so far is 39 Steps written by John Buchan. John Buchan was born in 1875. He died in 1940. These, there's two stories in this, The 39 Steps and The Powerhouse. I've completed The 39 Steps. I'm still working through The Powerhouse. just started it last night. I'll probably have it done in a couple days. But um, it's a spy novel. It's a spy novel. And I guess he's written a couple other ones. It's mildly entertaining. It's interesting. It's very light. Um, and it seems a little outdated. You know, being that it's uh, it really dates to pre World War One, but I kind of like that time era. That time era, anyway. So that's what I'm. That's one of the books I'm reading. It's real thin, so it doesn't you know, take long to get through. Not, uh, fiction's always much faster to read than nonfiction. All right, the sec this other one right here, The Pirate Hunter, written by Richard Zacks. This was uh, I think published in 2002. Richard Zacks is somebody that. Uh, Channels like the Discovery Channel, History Channel, they consult him when they're doing um, um, content on pirates and stuff like this. And he's, He writes pretty good stuff. This is the true story of Captain Kidd. Now, now um, this, is, this is a re... I don't know if I said it before, but this is a reread for me. It's 400 and some odd pages. I don't know if I should have done it as a reread, though. I don't know if it was worth it. It's a good book, but I just... It's a little long. I mean, you get kind of tired of reading about pirates. And, you know, of all the things I pretended to be when I was a kid, a pirate, I don't think it was ever one of them. I always thought of them as smelly individuals with scurvy and venereal diseases. And, but I, I wanted to know a little more about Captain Kidd. It was very informative. I just don't know as a, as a reread, it was a good choice. Uh, there's, there's another fiction, a uh, piece of fiction I picked up called The Sisters Brothers. This is very light reading. I guess several years ago, this was made into a movie. I have not seen it yet. I don't want to watch it until I'm done with the book. It's entertaining. Like I said, it's very light. Very easy to get through. Um, it kind of takes place back in the Old West. It starts off in the Oregon Trail. And uh, it's about a couple of brothers who were hired killers. You know? And um, I'm having fun with that one. This one by Joel Warner, uh, The Curse of the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> this one, was, I'm, I'm not using this video to go in depth with all these books. I'm just letting you know what I could get caught reading at this time. This book is uh, very, um, well, it's very, I, I wouldn't say scandalous, but man, it's, it's full of a lot of really raunchy, raunchy stuff. It's just, it's history. It's just history. It's, this is not fiction. This is about an, a real individual with uh, who's just full of debauchery. I mean, he might actually fit in well with today's society. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. This is intriguing, I will say. It takes place back in the 1700s. And I just finished this book today on Coolidge, the 30th president of the United States, Cal, uh, Calvin Coolidge. I almost said Captain Calvin Coolidge. <laughs> But Calvin Cool is written by Amity Schlaes. What a name, Amity. I've never met anybody named Amity. What a cool name. 
Uh, but I just finished this today. I'll make further comments on this on a separate video. Very thick book. Well, I say it is 464 readable pages. And um, I'm glad I finished it today. It's like, you know, that's the thing about reading is when you finally get done with something, it's a good feeling. A lot of people like the idea of reading, but they figure it's such a daunting task. They can't see themselves completing it. And there's so many unread books on their shelves. People will spend a lot of money on books that don't finish reading. I finished reading all my books. And this is another one that I'm currently, currently reading. American Lion, Andrew Jackson in the White House. So, and this is pretty, pretty, oh, this is even, is, I think this is, let me see, how many pages is this? This is written by John Meacham. Okay, so it's not really as long as it looks. It's just a big book. It's 300 and somewhere probably around 365 pages. Uh, yeah, something like that. But I'm learning things about Andrew Jackson I never knew before. I had some assumptions about him that were wrong. And that's why I like reading, reading uh, biographies to find out. Here's the thing about biographies. If even if you're reading a biography on someone that you like, that you think you like, if you still like them to the same degree that you did before you read the book, then it's not a good biography because people are just flawed. And you're going to find things about, about historical figures, people that you respect, even people currently that are, have books written about them. You're going to find out things about them that are less than redeeming. And so I don't think a biography is good if I walk away feeling <laughs> uh, like they could still charm me. That's just me, though. So I have six books going on. Now, I don't say that because that's nothing to, that's nothing to uh, brag or boast about because I think reading six books, books at a time is probably a bad idea. I really do. I think it's a bad idea. I just had this idea a couple weeks ago. I said, what if I, you know, I normally read like three, three or four books at a time. Like, what if I read six? What if I just up the ante? And what I found out is that my ambition wrote a check that my availability of time could not cash. But I, listen, I love reading. So I've, I've kind of backed it down to three or four a day. And that's much easier, much more sustainable. And, uh, but I've got good stopping points. All right, I'm, I just, like I said, I just finished Coolidge. I'm also working on American Lion and um, 39 Steps. So I'll probably pick up, now that I finished Coolidge, I'll pick up a different one. I'll pick up a different one and then just start taking them off, just finishing them completely off. Anyway, I, there's, there are, you know, I will say an, an added benefit to reading is that you, when you watch Jeopardy, you're, you get a little bit better at the clues. You know, you get a little bit better at the clues. I'm not great at all of them. There are nights when I watch and I go, I have no idea what they're talking about. But because I read a lot, there's a you know, some things crop to the surface that I don't even know are there. And I come up with the answer and, um, and I, I'm, I'm elated, you know, I could never go on the show and do well, but I feel good at home watching it. Also reading makes you appear smarter than what you actually are. I didn't say you are smarter than what you're not. I'm not saying you are as smart as you think you are, but it makes you appear smarter than you, what, you, what you are. And that's not always good. I say it's a benefit, but it's really not always good. Um, people will think you're the go-to guy or the go-to girl, depending on who's watching this. They're, they're going to think that. If you want to know something, go ask Greg. I don't know. I didn't. I haven't read about that. But that's what people think. So I don't know if it's an automatic uh, sign of respect that people might have for you, or just just simply an assumption that they have. I will tell you guys, if you're single, get caught reading in public because for some reason. Uh, women uh, will find a way to converse with you. If they find you attractive whatsoever, they'll find a reason to talk to you. And uh, women like men that appear intellectual. And books make you appear that way. Just a little tip from me to you single guys. It doesn't do me any good. I'm married. So um, my wife already knows I'm I'm not an intellectual. So, <laughs> so anyway, I, I do enjoy all these things. And I I went and I, I did a book haul at Goodwill. I'll talk about that maybe later this week or next week. If you're interested in any of the books that I have just mentioned here for yourself, 
I'll leave Amazon links for each and every single one of them so you can get them for yourself. I can't offer you a discount, but at least you can tap into these uh, like I have. And, you know, I've always thought about doing a live stream, like where I, I come on with somebody else who's also read the book and, you know, kind of do it like a podcast. It's something I've, I've thought about probably a million times, just never acted on. But if any of you uh, want to read these books or have read these books and you're interested in doing that, let me know. Hit me up and maybe we can work something out where we can do a live stream and do a discussion about these. And it doesn't have to be just two of us. Anyway, just an idea I had. Just something I'm, you know, it's just another ambition I have. Hopefully I can make it happen. To be honest with you, I'm a little nervous about doing a live stream. I've heard so many, so many stories, but I gotta do it one of these days. All right, that is what I have for you today. Get Caught Reading Month. What are you reading right now? What, if, if I was to run across you in public, what book would you have in your hand? And when do you read? Like, you know, I see, I read, I read during my lunchtime. I knock out a whole hour of reading then, and I read when I get home and read before I go to bed. And uh, I know it sounds like a lot, but, you know, I, I, I just kind of chop it up a little bit. How do you do it? And, um, you know, what kind of books do you like to read? Leave a comment down below. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so. If you hit that like button, it's really going to help me also. All right. That's all I've got for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I look forward to uh, responding to each and every one of you when I can down below. All right. If you want to know what I have in my beard? The Beard Struggle. I'm wearing the Beard Struggle Ragnarok Finale Beard Oil. I don't even know if they carry that anymore. But they, beard, the Beard Struggle is phenomenal. In my opinion, their beard oils and balms are great. I'll leave you a link down below for their stuff. Use my code BOSWELL20. It will save you 20% on everything. Try them out. They're really good. All right. I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you very much. Have a great day.